Myasis, Wikipedia article audio. Myasis is the parasitic infestation of the body of a live mammal by fly larvae that grow inside the host while feeding on its tissue. Although flies are most commonly attracted to open wounds and urine, or feces-soaked fur, some species can create an infestation even on unbroken skin and have been known to use moist soil and non-myatic flies as vector agents for their parasitic larvae. Signs and Symptoms Hospital Acquired Wound I Causes Life Cycle Vectors in Humans Specific myosis Semi-specific myosis Accidental myosis Diagnosis Classifications Prevention Treatment History Maggot therapy History 2 Colloquialisms for myosis include fly strike and blowfly strike, and the victim or the tissue may be described as fly blown. The name of the condition derives from ancient Greek mu upsilon alpha, meaning fly. Because some animals cannot react as effectively as humans to the causes and effects of myosis, such infestations present a severe and continuing problem for livestock industries worldwide, causing severe economic losses where they are not mitigated by human action. Although typically a far greater issue for animals, myosis is also a relatively frequent affliction of humans in rural tropical regions where myatic flies thrive, and often may require medical attention to surgically remove the parasites. Myosis varies widely in the forms it takes and its effects on the victims. Such variations depend largely on the fly species and where the larvae are located. Some flies lay eggs in open wounds, other larvae may invade unbroken skin or enter the body through the nose or ears, and still others may be swallowed if the eggs are deposited on the lips or on food. How myosis affects the human body depends on where the larvae are located. Larvae may infect dead, necrotic, or living tissue in various sites, the skin, eyes, ears, stomach, and intestinal tract, or in genitourinary sites. They may invade open wounds and lesions or unbroken skin. Some enter the body through the nose or ears. Larvae or eggs can reach the stomach or intestines if they are swallowed with food and cause gastric or intestinal myosis. Several different presentations of myosis and their symptoms. Nosocomial myosis is myosis acquired in a hospital setting. It is quite frequent, as patients with open wounds or sores can be infested if flies are present. To prevent nosocomial myosis, hospital rooms must be kept free of flies. Wound myosis occurs when fly larvae infest open wounds. It has been a serious complication of war wounds in tropical areas, and is sometimes seen in neglected wounds in most parts of the world. Predisposing factors include poor socioeconomic conditions, extremes of age, neglect, mental disability, psychiatric illness, alcoholism, diabetes, and vascular occlusive disease. Myosis of the human eye or ophthalmomyosis can be caused by Hypoderma tarandi, a parasitic bot fly of caribou. It is known to lead to uveitis, glaucoma, and retinal detachment. Human ophthalmomyosis both external and internal, has been caused by the larvae of the bot fly. The most common infected animal worldwide is the domestic sheep. For more information see fly strike in sheep. This condition is caused by the blow fly, especially where the weather is often hot and wet. The life cycle in sheep is typical of the disease. The female flies lay their eggs on the sheep in damp, 
protected areas of the body that are soaked with urine and feces, mainly the sheep's breech. It takes approximately 8 hours to a day for the eggs to hatch, depending on the conditions. Once hatched, the larvae then lacerate the skin with their mouth parts, causing open sores. Once the skin has been breached, the larvae then tunnel through the sores into the host's subcutaneous tissue, causing deep and irritating lesions highly subject to infection. After about the second day, bacterial infection is likely and, if left untreated, causes toxemia or septicemia. This leads to anorexia and weakness and is generally fatal if untreated. Blowfly strike accounts for over $1.170 million a year in losses in the Australian sheep industry, the largest such losses in the world. Given the seriousness of the risk, Australian sheep farmers commonly perform preventive measures such as mulesing designed to remove the most common targets for the flies. The docking of lamb's tails is also commonly practiced by sheep farmers worldwide. Maggots also commonly infest the vulvar area, causing the condition called vulvarmiasis. Such problems are not peculiar to Australia and New Zealand, they occur worldwide, especially in countries where livestock, particularly sheep, are kept under hot, wet, conditions including most of Africa and the Americas, ranging from the cold temperate regions in the north, to corresponding latitudes in the south. Myasis is also not restricted to sheep, screwworm flies regularly cause upwards of 100 million US dollar in annual damages to domestic cows and goats, though the impact has been heavily mitigated in recent years by the sterile insect technique. There are three main fly families causing economically important myosis in livestock and also, occasionally, in humans. Other families occasionally involved are Caused by flies that need a host for larval development Caused by flies that usually lay their eggs in decaying animal or vegetable matter, but that can develop in a host if open wounds or sores are present. Flesh flies, or sarcophagids, members of the family Sarcophagidae, can cause intestinal myosis in humans if the females lay their eggs on meat or fruit. Also called pseudomyosis. Caused by flies that have no preference or need to develop in a host but that will do so on rare occasions. Transmission occurs through accidental deposit of eggs on oral or genitourinary openings, or by swallowing eggs or larvae that are on food. The adult flies are not parasitic, but when they lay their eggs in open wounds and these hatch into their larval stage, the larvae feed on live and slash or necrotic tissue, causing myosis to develop. They may also be ingested or enter through other body apertures. Myosis is often misdiagnosed in the United States because it is rare and its symptoms are not specific. Intestinal myosis and urinary myosis are especially difficult to diagnose. Clues that myosis may be present include recent travel to an endemic area, one or more non healing lesions on the skin, itchiness movement under the skin or pain, discharge from a central punctum, or a small, white structure protruding from the lesion. Serologic testing has also been used to diagnose the presence of bot fly larvae in human ophthalmomyosis. Ultrasound showing maggot infestation Ultrasound showing maggot infestation Ultrasound showing maggot infestation German entomologist Fritz Zumpf describes myosis as the infestation of live human and vertebrate animals with dipterous larvae, which at least for a period, feed on the host's dead or living tissue, liquid body substances, or ingested food. For modern purposes however, this is too vague. 
For example, feeding on dead or necrotic tissue is not generally a problem except when larvae such as those of flies in the family Pyophyllidae attack stored food such as cheese or preserved meats, such activity suggests saprophagy rather than parasitism, it even may be medically beneficial in maggot debridement therapy. Currently myosis commonly is classified according to aspects relevant to the case in question. Accidental myosis commonly is enteric, resulting from swallowing eggs or larvae with one's food. The effect is called pseudomyosis. One traditional cause of pseudomyosis was the eating of maggots of cheese flies in cheeses such as Stilton. Depending on the species present in the gut, Pseudomyosis may cause significant medical symptoms, but it is likely that most cases pass unnoticed. The first control method is preventive and aims to eradicate the adult flies before they can cause any damage and is called vector control. The second control method is the treatment once the infestation is present, and concerns the infected animals. The principal control method of adult populations of myosis-inducing flies involves insecticide applications in the environment where the target livestock is kept. Organophosphorus or organochlorine compounds may be used, usually in a spraying formulation. One alternative prevention method is the sterile insect technique where a significant number of artificially reared sterilized male flies are introduced. The male flies compete with wild breed males for females in order to copulate and thus cause females to lay batches of unfertilized eggs which cannot develop into the larval stage. One prevention method involves removing the environment most favorable to the flies, such as by removal of the tail. Another example is the crutching of sheep, which involves the removal of wool from around the tail and between the rear legs which is a favorable environment for the larvae. Another, more permanent, practice which is used in some countries is mulesing, where skin is removed from young animals to tighten remaining skin leaving it less prone to fly attack. Caliphoridae, estridae, sarcophagidae, anisopididae, pyophyllidae, stratiomyidae, surfidae. Dermatobia hominis, Cordylobia anthropophaga, Estrus ovus, Hypoderma species, Gasterophilus species, Cochleomya hominivorax, Chrysomia butsiana, Ochmeromya senegalensis, Cuteribra spp. Lucilia species, Cochleomya species, Formia species, Califora species, Sarcophaga spp. Muscadomes tica, Fania species, Aristalis tenax, Musina spp. The classical description of myosis is according to the part of the host that is infected. This is the classification used by ICD 10. For example, dermal, subdermal, cutaneous, creeping where larvae burrow through or under the skin, furuncular, where a larva remains in one spot, causing a boil-like lesion. To prevent myosis in humans, there is a need for general improvement of sanitation, personal hygiene, and extermination of the flies by insecticides. Clothes should be washed thoroughly, preferably in hot water, dried away from flies, and iron thoroughly. The heat of the iron kills the eggs of myosis causing flies. This applies once an infestation is established. In many circles the first response to cutaneous myosis once the breathing hole has formed, is to cover the air hole thickly with petroleum jelly. Lack of oxygen then forces the larva to the surface, where it can more easily be dealt with. In a clinical or veterinary setting there may not be time for such tentative approaches, and the treatment of choice might be more direct, with or without an incision.
First the larva must be eliminated through pressure around the lesion and the use of forceps. Secondly the wound must be cleaned and disinfected. Further control is necessary to avoid further reinfestation. Livestock may be treated prophylactically with slow-release boluses containing ivermectin which can provide long-term protection against the development of the larvae. Sheep also may be dipped, a process which involves drenching the animals in persistent insecticide to poison the larvae before they develop into a problem. Frederick William Hope coined the term myosis in 1840 to refer to diseases resulting from dipterous larvae as opposed to those caused by other insect larvae. Hope described several cases of myosis from Jamaica caused by unknown larvae, one of which resulted in death. Even though the term myosis was first used in 1840, such conditions have been known since ancient times. Ambroise Pere, the chief surgeon to King Charles IX and King Henry III, observed that maggots often infested open wounds. Throughout recorded history, maggots have been used therapeutically to clean out necrotic wounds, an application known as maggot therapy. Fly larvae that feed on dead tissue can clean wounds and may reduce bacterial activity and the chance of a secondary infection. They dissolve dead tissue by secreting digestive enzymes onto the wound as well as actively eating the dead tissue with mouth hooks, too hard, probing appendages protruding on either side of the mouth. Maggot therapy also known as maggot debridement therapy, larval therapy, larva therapy, or larvae therapy is the intentional introduction by a healthcare practitioner of live, disinfected green bottle fly maggots into the non-healing skin and soft tissue wounds of a human or other animal for the purpose of selectively cleaning out only the necrotic tissue within a wound in order to promote healing. Although maggot therapy has been used in the U.S. for the past 80 years, it was approved by the FDA as a medical device only in 2004. Maggots were the first live organism to be marketed in the U.S. according to FDA regulations, and are approved for treating neuropathic foot ulcers, pressure ulcers, venous stasis ulcers, and traumatic and post-surgical wounds that are unresponsive to conventional therapies. Maggots were used in medicine before this time, but were not federally regulated. In 1990, California internist Ronald Sherman began treating patients with maggots produced at his lab at the UC Irvine School of Medicine. Sherman went on to CO found Monarch Labs in 2005 which UC Irvine contracted to produce maggots for Sherman's own continuing clinical research on myosis at the university. Monarch Labs also sells maggots to hospitals and other medical practices, the first U.S. commercial supplier to do so since the last one closed in 1935. In the U.S., demand for these fly larvae doubled after the FDA ruling. Maggot therapy is now used in more than 300 sites across the country. The American Medical Association and Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services recently clarified the reimbursement guidelines to the wound care community for medicinal maggots, and this therapy may soon be covered by insurance. The larvae of the green bottle fly are now used exclusively for this purpose since they preferentially devour only necrotic tissue, leaving healthy tissue intact. This is an important distinction, as most other major varieties of myositic fly larvae attack both live and dead wound tissue indiscriminately, effectively negating their benefit in non-harmful wound debridement. Medicinal maggots are placed on the wound and covered with a sterile dressing of gauze and nylon mesh. Too many larvae placed on the wound could result in healthy tissue being eaten. Maggot therapy has a long history and prehistory. The indigenous people of Australia used maggot therapy, 
and so do the hill peoples of northern Burma, and possibly the Mayans of Central America. Surgeons in Napoleon's armies recognized that wounded soldiers with myosis were more likely to survive than those without the infestation. In the American Civil War, army surgeons treated wounds by allowing blowfly maggots to clean away the decayed tissue. William Baer, an orthopedic surgeon at Johns Hopkins during the late 1920s, used maggot therapy to treat a series of patients with osteomyelitis, an infection of bone or bone marrow. The idea was based on an experience in World War I in which two soldiers presented to him with broken femurs after having lain on the ground for seven days without food and water. Bear could not figure out why neither man had a fever or signs of sepsis. He observed, on removing the clothing from the wounded part, much was my surprise to see the wound filled with thousands and thousands of maggots, apparently those of the blow fly. The sight was very disgusting and measures were taken hurriedly to wash out these abominable looking creatures. However, he then saw that the wounds were filled with beautiful pink granulation tissue and were healing well. Maggot therapy was common in the United States during the 1930s. However, during the second half of the 20th century, after the introduction of antibiotics, maggot therapy was used only as a last resort for very serious wounds. Lately maggots have been making a comeback due to the increased resistance of bacteria to antibiotics.